right, welcome back to the Super Chevy Brothers podcast. This is Chavar, joined by Mom and hey. Biko. Uh, today is the 8th of June. You know, June has got to be the month least appreciated, right? I mean, July is great. Got the 4th of July in there. It's hot. That's You think summer and flags. November, it's got the holidays. But June, I don't know. We don't give June enough credit. What did you do so far in June, Mom? So far, I've worked really hard. But you do realize there is a holiday in June. Juneteenth, but that's a Texas thing. Everybody else is pretending It's a they national care. holiday. Now it is. It's a federal holiday. Now it is. Now is what counts. I can't argue with that, but... That I mean, I just don't see people in. I bet you'll see people taking off work and getting paid for it. Sure, but okay. I just don't see people in like Michigan. I mean, and you know, Detroit's pretty black, celebrating Juneteenth, or people in Montana. It'll take a while to catch on. This is only what the second year, third year. It's like the third or fourth or something. Third. Well, did Trump do that for us? Did he make that national holiday? Thank you, Trump. Hell no. It had to be. It had to be, no, right? Don't don't start that. Don't black people do are that. they're already hey, listen, they they're already saying that black people like Trump because he went to prison now. So like I don't know. It's already over, man. It's over. They are it's saying over. it. Trump said it. Yeah, I've never well, seen prison uh, or jail a day in my life, and neither have you guys, despite Chavar's extreme discussion about his day in court but nobody's <laughs> that guy's a well that's I what they think about, about it they think black they think black people like jail and we relate to jail so they he think went to jail, black so we're gonna vote we're gonna vote for him they think we're, they think we're fucking idiots i listen i can't relate to that y'all can just all die as far as i'm concerned <laughs> oh my god i can't relate as far to as the anything y'all can all he does. Keel over. If somebody walk in there and shot everybody up i'd be very oh satisfied. my god okay come on okay. hey let's get no assassination that. of political opponents no. Biko, how about how about your june they're not my opponent how's your they're, june been everybody's opponent what june it's been june man i mean it's only been what eight days I, I not much has changed i've been out here playing games uh playing some akuma uh slayer came to the guilty gear i've been doing that too and homelander came to mortal kombat so too many games to play i haven't even played half of those but yeah, it's been fine. Nothing nothing too crazy. It's getting too hot here, but it is what it is. Hey. All right. Uh my June. My June's been it's been a June, you know? We went to Dad's birthday. Happy birthday, Dad. We went to a a nice med it would it be a Mediterranean restaurant? Is that what you call called it? It's called Mediterranean. It's actually Turkish. Okay. Same just thing. Turkish. Yeah, it kind of felt just Turkish, too. Mm -hmm. I feel like the our waitress was Turkish as well. She had that vibe, you know? Yeah, a lot of family there. Yeah. A um, lot of family, a lot of people there at Governor's house. I think this was called. <laughs> and uh, so happy birthday, Dad. Mayor. The mayor. The, oh, the mayor's house. That's what that's what it was called. If it were the governor's house, I would not go. You know who our governor is. I don't think the mayor is much better. But. Well, I don't think the governor the the governor could get up there. There's so many stairs, and they don't like. Uh, I didn't notice no, any no, ramps. No. I didn't like, notice can any you make ramps. Fun of for something, can you make fun of him for something that actually matters? Like it's always don't, the disability yeah, jokes. Don't do it's so that. annoying. What What do you mean? And you're right. I shouldn't have gone because it's the mayor too. He's a jerk. Why are we talking about politics? I, I wasn't talking about politics. We bring it up so that he can. I make, didn't you know, bring up any of it. Okay. So I don't really get what? I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know. I I didn't bring up any of that. Okay. Except no political views. Okay. Uh, and then I went to DreamHack for a day, which was fun. Um, it was it was huge. It it was. You you remember last time you went Pico, right? Yeah. Um, it was, I'd say, three times the size. There were more people. They had the entire convention center. They had all the conference rooms. Um, there were panels and a whole other section. 
the bring your own computer had of course they had the regular section but then they had another section across the other side of the convention with like just for like Fortnite people or something like that um we went to the stadium to watch the big um I don't even, I think it was Counter Strike they were playing. Um and it was it's pretty hype. There are tons of people in there shouting, having a good time. Uh lots of fighting game tournaments. They had Tekken and Mortal Kombat and Street yeah, Fighter games. and and uh they had all the big players come and fly in and uh you know, Tasty Steve. They had it was it was huge. It was gigantic. I don't it's never been that big. Uh, and so I was really surprised when I got in, like they changed the, the entrance and everything. You can't even enter how you used to, you have to enter from the, um, from the, the, the front of the convince, the convention center at the bottom floor, you got to enter from there. And, uh, it's just so much going on, but it was fun. A lot of free stuff, uh, a lot of Red Bulls, free Red Bulls. Um, Kalanika had a good time. Didn't play that many games because it was good. It was fun. So that was my June so far. Um, and Juneteenth is next week, I guess, right? Yes. That's a yeah. Wednesday, Friday, Thursday. Wait, no, it's not. Monday, no, the following Tuesday. Week. It's, yeah, it's the week after next. Just started June. And And happy birthday to Dad. Yeah, so you're telling me Juneteenth is not next week? Yes, today that's what is we're the eighth. Sorry, today's the eighth. Right. Next so next week, this time will be. Sorry, when do you think Juneteenth is? Isn't it like the nineteenth? It's the nineteenth. You are you even black, bro? What are you doing? How do you just not Bruh, know? I'm one of the ones that got freed on time, so I'm like, what are you guys doing? Down there, <laughs> I, mean, oh my gosh. I, I, I was juking no, and well, jiving, and it, they were well, just shucking. I, I, I'm like, what's going on over there? You were so confident that it was next week, and then you didn't even know what the date was. I thought it was the 13th. Were... Oh, Jesus Christ! All right, well, th- that changes my plans. <laughs> okay, well, uh, this is Super Shammy Brothers podcast, and we talk about games and other things. Um, Mom. Hmm. Before we move on to your wonderful movie review, because I am excited to see what it is. I have no clue. Um, I do want to say, because I brought this up with mom. Have you seen The Kingdom of the Apes, Pico? No. Kingdom of the Planet of the... Okay. After you've thought about it, after I brought it up, mom, that chimpanzee... Did have Don Cheadle eyes, right? Yes, he did. I don't know. I, I'm watching this movie. I'm thinking, this chimp looks like they don't look like anyone because they have chimp faces, right? They don't have people faces. Not like the newer, like, I guess they're not newer. Not like the old movie where they had just the mask or the 2001 where it was makeup. You can kind of see like there's a person there and they're walking normal and stuff. But these look like chimps, right? But there's this one. And he, he's like the fun, goofy friend. They gave him Don Cheadle eyes. I don't know how they did that, but it, it, it clicked with me when they were like uh, climbing one of the walls. Like, that's who that guy looks like. Yeah, it's kind of creepy. It's, it's kind of creepy. But it worked. It worked. It worked. Um, okay. Mom, you ready for your movie review? Yeah, I, I hate you brought that up again because I had a different review for that one, but we're going to go forward. We're not you had a different sh- review for Kingdom of the Planets of the Apes? I did. I had it in a more artistic format. However, maybe we'll play that at a later date. We will. We will play that at a later All date. Right. And also, I didn't have time to craft my artistic rendition for the movie I was about to review, I just saw it last night and the creative juices weren't flowing as freely because I immediately fell asleep afterwards. Um, So 
this one, I, I, I don't really want to get that artistic on. It's kind of straightforward. But the next one, which is the M. Night Shyamalamalamala movie, The Watchers, I will be a little more artistic. All right? Okay. So if we're ready, can you cue me up, dog? This is Bob's Movie Club, starring Bob. All right, everyone, it's summer and time for entertainment at the movies that's the best part of summer is knowing that movies are coming out so we had we're going to have the great ones we're going to have the action-packed ones we're going to have the kids movies and that's just the greatest part about summer so my first summer review is an old-time favorite a part four of a sequel series bad boys ride or die of course, the cast continues to include Will Smith as Detective Mike Lowry, Martin Lawrence as Detective Marcus Miles, uh, ex-love interest Paolo Nunez as Rita. She's become the captain. If you recall, in number three, um, the captain was murdered. And we pick up in this particular uh, movie where... The fallout happens after the captain is murdered. He's been set up to say that he was a part of the cartel all along and that he was taking money from the cartel. So, of course, Mike Lowry, who held him in his arms as he died, has to uh, prove, Mike Lowry, I should say Marcus and Mike, that that is not the captain that they knew, that he was not corrupt. So that was the entire, you know, premise of the movie. Uh, of course, there was action, lots of beautiful cars, beautiful girls. It's Miami, you know, and lots of interaction between uh, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. I have to give it to Martin Lawrence. He was funny. He really brought the laughs, at least for me. Um, and it helps to go to the movie theater to see how others are reacting and I have to say, we had a very excited audience. They were very much <laughs> interested and involved with the movie. When things would happen, they'd shout out. And it was actually kind of fun. It was a fun ride. Um, Martin got lots of laughs. He had funny jokes, joke, joke, jokey joke, Martin Marr. And the storyline was really well done. I, I have to give bad boys that. They do have good storylines. This one wasn't any different. Um, in the last uh, bad boys, Detective Mike Lowry discovered he had a son. And of course, by now, that son is a grown-up son. And the son also plays a part in this role, or this movie as well. So I'm going to tell you, it's a great date night movie. It's a great, I got nothing to do today. I want to stay cool in a movie theater movie. It's very entertaining. Of course, you know, the storyline is good. It continues from the last one, which I kind of like. Um, I did look at number three uh, prior to this last week just to catch up. So everything flowed very well. Um, the characters are getting older, but it doesn't distract from any of the action and fun that they're having. So it's a blast. I, I really enjoyed myself. I laughed. I didn't cry. I just laughed and went in for the ride. So I recommend it. I give it three full fat, large popcorn tubs and two giant sodas sipped till the end. And that's the movie review. All right. Okay. Um, okay. When you, I have a question about the movie. Is that okay? 
Absolutely. Master of Viewer. Okay. Um, when you're watching this movie and you see Will Smith, did you think about the Chris Rock slap at all? Okay. See, that's I knew you were going there. It was really difficult to watch him initially. I think about halfway through the movie, I forgot all of the stupid and personal stuff. But initially, well, the first thing I was thinking about his stupid personal stuff. And then the slap. And, you know, at first I was like, oh, why am I here? Why did I pay to come into this? And then the movie got fun and action-packed, and I kind of forgot about it. Um, I kind of hate that they share so much about people's lives and all that because you're not going to see that person. You're going to see them act and to do their job. You Is there know? something wrong with Will Smith? I'm lost. He, he, she's what talking about the, with Will Smith? The, Chris Ma- the Chris Rock smack and the... Oh, and the, well, um, people who aren't pearl clutching. What's the problem with him? Well, and also his family. I mean, she just thinks about the actor and not just watching the movie because his his wife and all that. I mean, yeah. that was like a year, eighteen months of like baloney coming out of here. Right. Him. I mean, she just first she emasculated him by sleeping with this guy and making it public and all that stuff, and then she told all of his personal business, you know, what his preferences are. And and I don't really care. I mean, you know, to each his own. But, you know, it's, it's just like you're doing that to sully someone's reputation. So I don't know. It, it You know, like I said, halfway through the movie, I wasn't thinking about that. I was just enjoying the movie. But, yeah, I have to admit, initially I, I paused, you know. And... I kind of had to drag your dad to go because he's like, I don't want to go to that. And, well, well, he doesn't want to watch anything in a movie theater ever right. again now. So. And then he goes, yeah, let's go. Because he had to admit part three was really fun. <laughs> we watched it, you know. So I didn't even know this movie was coming out until it was almost out. I had no idea this was even They didn't start at, until like, like two weeks ago. It, it's really weird recently, especially after COVID, they don't advertise for movies until I knew Bad Boys was coming out because right. there were many advertisements. And then maybe a month ago, they were like, OK, we we're going to advertise for it. But like there's a movie coming out with Elvis, uh, Bane and some pretty girl and about them being in a biker gang. And it's out in two weeks. And Elvis and Bane. All right. OK, hold on. Elvis. Oh, While you look that up, I'm let so me tired, say bro. that they did advertise this, but it was mainly while they were making it. You know. Yeah, it, yeah, it was Austin Butler. Okay, Austin Butler Thank and like to know the actor Tom. Actors names. Thank Tom you. Hardy. Oh, Tom Hardy. Yeah. So this movie's coming out in like two weeks, and I just saw the first trailer for it. I saw the poster for it earlier this week because I saw the Kingdom of the Planet movie. And then they they put out a trailer for it, I think, that two days ago or something. But outside of that, I haven't heard anything about this movie. And it's like, why do they not advertise movies beforehand? Like, anymore? They why. just don't. I don't see a lot of movies in theaters anymore. And I don't have advertisements on, like, anything. Because I pay to get advertisements out of my face. Oh. Um, yeah, they they're not doing a very good job of pushing these things out, even like in general. Because I, I haven't read anything about these movies. I think the, I'm looking it up. The last article that was written about this movie was like in February. Like, well, it's it's called I the don't bike know what's riders. Up with publicity, yeah, the bike riders. I the publicity is really weird with movies because, like you said, they don't really promote them like they used to. It's no. kind of like they'll announce them, promote them when they announce them, and then before you then know that, it, it's it. Out. Yeah, the yeah. well, movies and, are and okay. Think, think about it. It's really hard to promote unless there are trailers in the theater because people don't watch regular TV anymore. People stream things, you know. So, I mean, you'll see it on some of the news releases or something like that, but it's hard to know where to advertise. People have so many means of watching whatever they're watching. 
And that's a lot of money to try to cover them all. Well, and like, like you can't advertise on Netflix and you can't advertise on, um, uh, can you advertise on Max? Have you seen any advertisements on Max for movies that aren't on Max? I don't think there no. are. Yeah, yeah, there, there are. I don't see. You can't like, like even Amazon, right? Like, I, you advertise in Amazon ads now. They, they make you yeah. ads now. Um, unless for you certain pay stuff, more money, which is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Some stuff um, it doesn't matter how much you pay. You always have ads if it's from a really? certain source. That's yeah, crazy. like if yeah. because the way Amazon works, it's it's more like a plug-in. So you can have Prime. But if you also have a different subscription with someone else for oh, like oh, AMC I'm or something, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about Prime. Yeah, no, like straight up Prime. If you pay, money, oh yeah, the, yeah, there's a, there's yeah, some, some Prime things. Yeah. yeah, like a TV show. Yeah, you that's mean different? Those are those individual services. Yeah, but you mean like TV shows? Yeah, that have ads. Like Prime movies, Prime TV shows. They always have an advertisement in the middle or at the beginning. Yeah, it depends, right. it's, like, it depends on who. It it depends on who it's from. Like yeah, if the it's streaming place. Go ahead. Go ahead and say what you want to say. Go ahead. No, I was just saying it depends on if it if it's in like um depending on like who produced it. It can be a prime movie or something or like Walking Dead or something like that. It'll have ads depending on stuff like it's really yeah, yeah. That's my point is that they don't advertise anything that they're not they don't directly have their hands in. So a lot of these movies aren't even getting advertised on are advertised on streaming services because the streaming services are looking out for themselves. And they're not going to tell you about the movie until it's coming to the streaming service. So, like, Peacock hasn't shut up about having Oppenheimer and Barbie and all that stuff um, for yeah. a long time. They just got that Magical Negroes movie. They've been advertising the hell out of that. But, and the funny thing about that, <laughs> my wife didn't even know the movie existed until she saw it on the Peacock thing. She thought it was a brand new movie. I was like, yeah, that came out like three months ago. Magical Negroes, like, oh, yeah. like, she, thought, she thought it was a Peacock exclusive. I was like, no, that came out in theaters several months ago. Is that the name of the movie? The Magical yeah. Negroes, yeah. Yes. It's Aww. about how, you know, in all those old movies, the janitor or the we're all magical teacher, Negroes, where they're all magical yeah. Negroes, and they give you the wisdom to dig, you know. Yeah, it's, not, it's not actually racist. Yeah, it's not, it's not like super racist. It's like, well, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. It might be racist. And I've, I need to you, finish it, but from what I saw, it ends up being a, a, a romance movie where he falls in love with the white woman he's supposed to be guiding. Anyway. Um, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I it, it, it's it, advertisements and for movie, but that's not true because I see Deadpool ads all the time. I don't know where I'm seeing them, but I see them. I do too. Wait, did Mom finish her review? Or are we just talking? He, she did. He always just cuts me off. We're done. He did, but okay. Thanks for your review. Mom. I did finish it. All right. Thank you, Mom. All uh, right. Let me just say, stay tuned next week. We'll have a review for, um, and again, M. Night Shyamalan movie. And it's being directed by his wife, M. Night Shyamalan. Ishana. Ishana Shyamalan. Ishana Shyamalan. Okay. Well, um, thank you, Mom. We have more. Okay, so you know, I I have to apologize. I I did not have time, Pico, to come up with an epic music intro for our next segment. Um, what's your segment called, Pico? I was gonna call it Pico's Backlog because I have way too many games to play. Because I'm subscribed to all these services and I buy games when I want to play them and then I don't play them until I remember eight months later. So every week I'm going to try to at least crack one of these games open and tell you about it. At least, you know, see my first impressions if I'm going to keep playing it, if I, you know, I think it's something you should skip. Um, And I don't know, like I just have so many games. It's way too many on Steam, PlayStation, all that stuff. And I don't play all of them. So, yeah, Biko, Biko is backlog. Okay, Biko's backlog. Um, just j- okay. Uh, it, it, imagine I'm 
Alfred making Batman suit, just asking questions, nothing final. I'm assuming you don't want any fart sounds in your intro. Yeah. yeah. Okay, not go. Okay, I'm not going that way with yeah. it then. Okay, I'll figure yeah. something else out. All right, well, what game did you play? Right, so this game was in Humble Bundle a few months ago, and it was on PlayStation Plus, I think, the beginning of this year, if not the end of last year, but it's called Roller Drome. Um, you, if you've been online uh, and look into video games, like actually read about video games, you might have seen this one around. It's a Tony Hawk, like, hybrid with, like, John Wick shooting type stuff. Literally, it's mm. like a third-person shooter, but on, you know... On on skates, basically. Yeah, um, I played the no, demo. No, yeah, you played the demo. Um, I think we went to DreamHack a couple years ago. There was a demo because the game wasn't quite out yet. But that game is out now. So it's been out for a while. I think it came out last year, 2023. And um, yeah, so I decided to crack that one open. I tried it on both PlayStation and PC. Um, but once again, yeah, to describe the game, it's Tony Hawk, but with guns. Um, so just to set, just to set the stage... The game takes place in the near future. I think this is actually kind of alarming. <laughs> the game takes place in 2030. Um, and so, yeah, six years from now. And it's kind of like a dystopian future. So, yeah, the future that we're leading into, right? So in this future, a tech company has taken over the entire like country. Basically, we're still in the United States. And they've started this new sport called Roller Drone, which is... Um, a sport where people get on it's like inline skates or like skates basically with guns um everything from a shotgun to a pistol to a grenade launcher um and they go into an arena to basically fight for their lives and get as many points as they can while killing all the enemies that are in the arena all the enemies are um robots basically because the lead um the people who made the entire program are you know the big tech company you play as Kara Hassan, um, who is one of the competitors. This is like her first year entering it. And you got a close relationship with like the top competitor in the sport ever, uh, Morgan Ray. So throughout the story, because there is a story, you guys are communicating, kind of trying to see what's going on with the um, the competition because things seem a little fishy this year. There's not a ton of dialogue besides um, the announcements that happen through like... Is it like cutscenes or, like, or...? No. So yeah, there, there aren't cutscenes. It's... Um, at the beginning of each like chapter because there's four like chapters right you get like a, th a first person perspective and you get like a room or two you can like investigate so you have the choice to kind of skip this stuff you don't really have to do it you just walk out the door and go play but i i, I took the time to actually walk through and you, you know, read newspapers you read like whiteboards you look on the computer you like you know you see like a like a slideshow for beginners that tells you how to play the game it also explains where the robots come from where the guns come from um, how you're able to get like you're able to reload by doing tricks and killing enemies and the way that you get reloaded is because they have like a a system that they've set up to like generate ammo in your guns whenever you do something cool right so like a lot of the lore and all that stuff explained through these like first person like kind of like it's what do people used to call them walking simulators it's like kind of like that kind of perspective thing where you walk through you pick up stuff read it and it usually didn't take more than like i would say like five minutes to kind of see everything unless you're like a slow reader or something is it all in the locker um, room i remember it being in the locker room um sometimes so like for instance i have anything to get to the fourth chapter i'm not gonna spoil the third chapter but the first chapter you start in the locker room um you get to kind of see who you're competing against by the way the people you're competing against y'all don't you all aren't in the arena at the same time um you're just competing with scores so there's no like you know at least where I'm at so far right like that may that may have changed at some point in the story, but um yeah you're in the locker room of the first one the second one you're at the news station um because the news station is taking interest in you because you are one of the um more popular players um and you're like getting up there in the ranks so you know but usually what it, how these sections end is you walk out the door and you start the run so or you start the level um and. The lore, the lore is actually a little bit more, it's cooler than I was expecting. I wasn't really expecting it to be like, you know, that involved, but you know, it's kind of like anti-corporation, you know, there's a lot of riots and stuff happening. I forgot. This is actually not in America. This is like in Europe because they talk about riots happening in London and stuff like that because people aren't with the fact that the new tech company is trying to like basically like literally start a police state across the entire country or across the entire nation. Right. So 
you're kind of like that's kind of like background to everything that you're doing right kind of explain that future setting is as a character Kara has been watching roller drums since she was like a kid so she always wanted to be like one of the top players so she now she's getting it she's being able to do it um it is a lethal game you can die um players can die from it it even says in the game like you'll be you know disqualified if you get injured too much to continue or if you die so yeah that's that's the story so far nothing too crazy the part where i got to so far is that uh, morgan ray the person that we're corresponding to through you know text and stuff they're kind of getting bashed by the media which the tech company also owns and they're starting to let us know that like this year isn't normal so not sure exactly what's going to happen yet gameplay wise um, a, um how yeah. does it evolve because when i played the demo i think it was like a two-hour demo or something and you know, you, you go, you roll around, you do tricks, you get shot at, you dodge the shots, you shoot back. But how does it go from, like, the first level to chapter three, wherever you are? How, I mean, what what changes? Right. So it starts out pretty basic, like he said, right? So you have two dual, you have dual pistols. Um, you have your skates. And your the skating physics are very much like Tony Hawk. I think, I think that's, like, the big, biggest comparison. I think this game has better momentum than Tony Hawk. But yeah, so you start out with your pistols and your skates. You do tricks by, you know, pressing the square button or whatever your equivalent of the square button is in different directions and then spinning. Um, and then you can use, like, bullet time and stuff to shoot your enemies. You gain points through doing that. You gain points through um, grabbing different items as well. You gain points for stringing a lot of long different combos. You do get be- you do get penalties for getting hurt, but it's not that bad. It's not as bad as, like, like it doesn't end your combo or anything like that. But um, as the game progresses, the stages get more, like, lateral. So, like, you kind of have to learn how to, like, navigate better. You have to learn how to wall ride better. You have to learn how to um, acid drop, um, which is, like, a you know, when you drop into the ramp and, like, kind of, you know, jumping over ramps rather than going up them to do tricks. Um, you get more guns. So there's a shotgun. There's a grenade launcher. And you also get a more bigger variety of enemies because when you start out, there's only... Uh, a guy who, there's like a brawler which is a guy who like swings a bat at you and you run by him right um, a sniper so yeah and then there's a sniper um and as the game progresses more things get added like there's um heavies that shoot missiles at you which you can you have to shoot the missiles to in order to like dodge them um everything has a perfect dodge by the way so if you dodge it at the last second you'll get like a bonus where if you also aim within that same time frame you get like you know even better bullet times and like a little bit more leniency on your ammo and you get well actually your guns get reloaded when you do that they get reloaded automatically um but yeah so like there's that stage but then like the next stage is like you know okay you got the shotgun and the pistol again but um there's more heavies so like the heavies you have to you have to kill them either before their shields come up or you have to play the waiting game right they they had explosives they had environmental hazards they had wall riding as time goes on um, where I'm at now, now there's guys who shoot like ice beams at you, which you can dodge them the first time, but you kind of have to keep running or else they'll hit you still. Um, there's guys who shoot. Yeah, mines I've, out. I, I think I fought those um, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's there's riot guards that have that shoot mines out, and when they expl- when they ki- when they die, they pop out like four different mines. Um, there's also a mech that I fought recently that has two guns on the side, and you have to kill each gun and the person in it. And then there's. Um, Oh, there's so there's a lot of different enemies. Yeah, th- those are the enemies I fought okay. so far. I think there's one more that I'm missing, but every three levels or so, every two levels actually, they add a new mechanic. So the game the game picks things up pretty quickly, right? The level structure is kind of funny. It's kind of like um I'd compare it to Hotline Miami and Tony Hawk combined. Like Tony Hawk's like arcade like classic mode because they drop you into a space, but you have all these goals you can do like collect coins or like do a trick by a certain thing. Um, or, you know, kill an enemy while you do this grind or, you know, um, kill an enemy. I think there's one where there's a sniper on top of a tower. You have to like jump over him and kill him with the shotgun in a specific way in order to get that goal done. Right. You also earn better scores. Um, you, you're, you're kind of, your goal is to beat the score of Morgan Ray and kind of the person you're following after. But yeah, that's kind of the structure. I would compare like the, the level structure, like hotline Miami and, you know, Tony Hawk and specifically Tony Hawk's classic mode. How long is it? You said you were starting chapter four. Is that the last chapter or? Sorry, uh, yeah, I'm in chapter three right now. Um, chapter four is the last chapter. Each chapter has three levels. So, yeah, you get the first level. Yeah, so like the first level is like the most basic level, but then, you know, things inc- incrementally like bigger as it goes on. After you beat the game, you unlock an arcade mode, which, you know, gives you a little more freedom um, to kind of do, do more stuff. Um, and there's no multiplayer? 
No, no multiplayer. There's no multiplayer. So no multiplayer. It's a fully single player game. Um, very arcadey. The graphics, by the way, there's it's like cell shaded. So I really like the cell shading. I think it it really fits the game too. Because you know, you hear it and the concept sounds brutal. It sounds like something that's like, oh, that sounds really hardcore. But they stylize it in a way where you kind of forget that you're like in this post apocalyptic arena <laughs> fighting for your life. Um, the music is pretty cool. It's pretty good too. It's not like, you know, anything to write home about, but it's like very atmospheric, a little bit of techno, kind of like trying to keep the adrenaline going. Um, but yeah, single player game, these very well contained, like, you know, self contained levels. I'm having a blast with it. I think it's really good. Um, the difficulty is picking up, which I do appreciate because when it's, when there's games like this, there's just so many things to manage. Um, because the, the thing that I think makes this game hard, or rather like the challenge of it, not so much hard, but like what makes it interesting, is you kind of have to balance doing tricks with the whole shooting thing. And they make shooting easy because you have auto target, right? So like you're not having to aim exactly at what you want to aim at unless you're using something like the grenade launcher because that's a little more like of a AOE area of effect weapon. But on top of like, you know, mashing R2 occasionally, you have to make sure you're wall, wall riding. You have to make sure you get to the right stage of the level because some guys you can't reach unless you get high up enough and then you know that wastes time because you're trying to get it done within a certain amount of time um it, it it became it becomes like a lot of like uh what do they call it uh it's a, the thing they call like memory stack or something like that in fighting games but it's just a lot of stuff to manage at, at one time and the reloading to me is the part that's the hardest to get the hang of because you can't just kill several dudes in a row you have to do tricks in between like you have to or else you're not going to be able to shoot everybody and you're not going to be able to finish about people's health bars because you won't have enough ammo. So um, really enjoying this one so far. I got a few hours into it. Um, I think what it, what's best about it is that it's very replayable. Um, it's good to okay. just kind of go over levels again and see how you can kill people, like how you can kill the different um, robots in a different way. You know, you can get multi-kills. You can go back with different weapons. Um, you can find out how to do tricks because there's a lot of different tricks there's like the whole the whole trick library like similar to tony hawk and my only gripe is that it's a little hard to do the tricks and spin at the same time because tony hawk handled this differently this game can't really do that because there's too many buttons but um in tony hawk to spin you use the triggers but in this game to spin you use the stick but you also use the stick to pick which trick you want to do so sometimes you have to like dabble you have to like double tap right to do like you know double tap right and then hold square to do a grab but then to spin you have to like keep you have to hold another direction so if you want to spin left and do a trick that's on the right it's going to be a little difficult um especially because the game rewards you for trick like variety it gets a little frustrating sometimes when you're trying to bust out different tricks but then you're also like you know you're kind of like under the you kind of are like forced to do certain tricks just because of how the controls work but um, I, I'll check and see if there's other controller settings because I feel like if I was able to rotate, this wouldn't really be as like be as like big of a deal. But um, I think it's solid. I feel like it actually feels better than a lot of skating games do. Um, some better than some of the Tony Hawk games do, um, as far as like the feeling of the actual skating and stuff. The grinding feels good. The skating feels good. The wall riding feels good. It reminds me some in some ways of Jet Set Radio Future more than it does uh, Tony Hawk. Okay. Yeah. What do you rate it? I mean, are you rating them or just... Uh... Right. So I figured I would rate these and I, I feel like I would more so recommend them. I feel like I recommend this game highly, um, especially if you're somebody who has PlayStation Plus and is just sitting in your library. Go pick it up and play it. It's not something that's really hard to get into. Is it free in um, PlayStation Plus? It was. It, that's what I said at the beginning. It was free on PlayStation Plus at some point. I think it was like a few months ago. Um, I think it was just a demo. I think that's what... like it was like. No, a... I have it in my library. It's free. The time playing it okay so, yeah so it was it was free um in playstation plus uh now i'm just gonna look it up um four months ago yeah so it was it was free in february yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it was free in february exactly cool, cool 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 so it was also on uh humble bundle humble bundle i think around the same time i think it actually might have been a couple months afterwards i think in like march or april so um highly recommend it i, I would give this one a highly recommend i give it uh, two thumbs up i think it's great i really like this game um 
especially because like it's one of those games that i was kind of like all right i think i know what to expect from this when i play it and you kind of do know what to, to expect but i feel like the strategy of it kind of is the surprising part because it isn't just like blindly going in and go okay let me just shoot do a trick shoot do a trick you have to dodge you have to know how to navigate the area you have to know like who you're going to kill first what you're going to use to kill them um kind of how you're going to get them to kind of hurt each other stuff like that too so i highly, i recommend this one if i were to give it a rating out of like five like you know one through five i give it like a i give it like a mm, i give it like a four I, i'm i'll be nice i'll be i'll give it a four nothing nothing five worthy yet but this is something i've been having installed for a long time i wanted to um a long time in in uh I'm fine. Glad I finally got away. Okay. Yeah, finally, glad I finally got around to it. All right. Well, thank you for that review. Um, I will have music. I will have. Ooh, I've got. I'm getting ideas. I'm really building up. I can't. Uh, oh, it's, it's fighting. I gotta fight him off now. It's so many ideas for theme song. Yeah. But thank you for that review of Roller Drone. It's drone, right? Not drone, like dome, but drone. It's drone, like D R O N E. Hello. What'd you say? It's drone, Sorry. right? D R O N E. Drone. 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 It is drone. Okay, roller drone. Okay. Yeah. It's dome with an R. Okay. Yeah, and oh. sadly, um, this studio is one of the ones that got shut down recently. Um. That, that got shuttered by PlayStation and others. So I don't think we'll be seeing a sequel to this game. So please enjoy it as much as you can. Um, yeah, this is the thing is the game I was going to play next week um, was is also a game that <laughs> the studio got shut down. Yeah, I <laughs> it's insane, dude. Oh, no, it was shut down by take two. Yeah, take two shut them down. So by the way, FIFA still on PlayStation Plus, guys. Yeah, what's up with that? Why is it still free? What's up with that? Cuz they they need people they I I'm I'm absolutely guaranteed positively sure that sales are down because it doesn't say FIFA on the front package and people don't know what it is cuz the the general person who plays FIFA is a guy who walks in the GameStop and says, "Where's FIFA?" They don't even go to the wall. They're like, "You got no, FIFA?" Okay. And then they like they like there's no FIFA there's FC twenty four and they're like is that the same thing they got no clue like that's the general guy who plays FIFA or Madden or NBA two K or any of those things the name change is probably why it's free on PlayStation Plus because they're like we got to get people to play and also realize this is FIFA so. Especially since FIFA is going to have a game next year with Take Two, it's probably going to be FIFA Two K, right? But um, yeah, yeah, it's probably going to be FIFA Two K. Yeah, we, I don't know if we talked about that on here. Yeah, Two K bought we did FIFA, last time. Which, yeah, that's hmm. did we? I thought we just talked. About we that did. Anyway. We did. It wasn't a topic, so it wasn't a topic, but we talked about it. All right. Well, thank you two for such wonderful additions to the show. Uh, now it's time for the news. Over the weekend, or not weekend, last couple of days, I guess, day, uh, we've had Summer Game Fest 2024. Uh, we had a lot of trailers, we had a lot of announcements, um, and... I'm, I, Summer Game Fest kind of confused me a little bit because they do this thing where they play the you know the lady on the stage. And stuff. But is it also a thing people can go to and festival? Is it actually Summer a festival? No, no. People, it, this is not. <laughs> That's why I think it's funny because, to call it the Summer Game Fest. It's, but it's, I saw it's invite only. Okay, because I saw people say I'm going to be at the fest, and like, uh, but I didn't think it was a festival. But I thought it was just like they just said the name because that's what they named it. But I didn't think there was a festival. Then I saw people saying, I'm going to be at the festival. And I'm going to get some gameplay and record and all. I'm like, is it actually a thing? Well, I guess it is, it is a festival, but festival doesn't imply that everybody's invited. Um, 
it, it, it is invite only. It's only for media influencers. And it, well, people who are in media and influencers, which at this point is the same thing as far as that space goes. Um, but yeah, no, it's like, it's just, I don't know. I feel like it's funny that we're not just calling this the new E3 because it is the new E3. I know people don't want it to be because they're spiteful or whatever, but that's what it is. Just I mean, it can't be the new E3 if like, if people, like, if it's only like a thousand people going. I mean, how many people were going to E3? E3 was, was like invite only towards the end. No, it wasn't. And E3 wasn't ever just games. I mean, games is probably the biggest part, but they had robots and three 3D printers debuted like to the world at E3 and stuff. Like E3 was this big thing with a lot E3 of different stuff. E3 has been stuff. invite only since 2007. No. Yes, E3 has oh, Okay, 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 sorry. The last 3 years it was open to the public. Hold on. 2017 was the first time they made it open to the public. Are you looking up the same thing I'm looking up? Because I'm literally telling you, like, so you don't have to do that. Oh, my God. I'm not looking it up. Yeah, what is he doing? Sure, talk. I don't know about that. Anyway. I, I, I mean, you don't know about it. I just told you because I found it. <laughs> anyway. What is there to not know about? <laughs> know, there's a lot of false information on the internet these days. Anyway, let's go through, let's go through some of the stuff. And now it's at the move on. That's crazy. Summer's Game. <laughs> so every From uh, Summer Game Festival. Okay. All right. Uh, Mom, I don't know. Did you get a chance to see Summer Games Festival, Summer Video Festival game? No, I didn't. I missed it. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna hold on tight. You're gonna listen oh to the the words that come out of our mouth, and you're just gonna guess what the game is and pretend you saw it. Okay? Is this your segment? No, no this is the news. Oh, okay. Um, All right, I, I, I'll let Biko start. You, what do you want to start with here, Biko? Yeah, There's a lot. Of the stuff. news. He played. He played the thing and everything. I, um, I hear, yeah. I hear. So summer summer games fest was last night i actually watched the whole thing this morning by watched the whole thing i mean i i skipped through the boring ads and stuff because oh my god there were so many there were a lot of ads i watched this so morning too ads it was kind of ridiculous um but yeah no so the first thing they showed <laughs> the first thing they showed is a game that i feel like is i'm confused about what it is but i also kind of understand what's going on now after i watched the trailer this leaked not that long ago, um, but it's a Lego Horizon Adventures, which, um, listener, you might be like, what's that? Um, what's Horizon mean? Oh, yeah, it's Horizon, that PlayStation game. Yeah, so Horizon Adventures um, is a Lego game uh, that's, yeah, it's a Lego game that's a Horizon game. So Horizon is a Lego game. So I, exactly I think it sounds like. I think it's super interesting because it's going to the Switch as well, <laughs> which is kind of weird. Wait, what? Yeah, it's going to be on the Switch. It's crazy. That's like I, I. It's like that's so with, weird. Which it kind yeah, of makes sense PC because it's too. it's Lego, but it's also like one of PlayStation's new things, and they just letting it go to Switch. So, so well, weird. yeah, that's the thing, right? Like they're they're gonna get it. They're gonna get it because it's the kid version, right? And it's probably because it can actually run on Switch. But I mean, I'm I I kind of get it, but I also don't get it. So if you watch the trailer, right? It's it's basically like the old Lego games, just in that horizon universe with some of the same gameplay mechanics as the horizon universe basically like you know if you haven't played it there's a lot of uh like status effects and like you know you have to use weaknesses against the monsters and knock off certain parts and it seems like the lego version has the same thing it's co-op as well so that's pretty cool um so yeah i think i think i think it it's an interesting idea i think what this is showing is that lego is expanding out to kind of do that thing that they were doing earlier in like the 2000s where they would have Lego games based on properties, but I think now the property is going to be video games rather than just like, you know, Lord of the Rings or Batman and stuff like that. I think it's going to be stuff that's you know video game based. So this is a Sony project, though. Um, it did get announced the same week as um, another Lego thing. I think there's going to be a Pharrell biopic that's a Lego movie. I, what you I well you mean Will Ferrell or before. Pharrell the the Music Man? No, not your silly dumb joke, uh, Pharrell. The the why, if I was talking about Will Ferrell, I would have said Will Ferrell. Um, Pharrell is he has a biopic that's gonna be a Lego movie. I'm not joking. I don't really. You were talking about the music guy, 
right? Yes, Shavar, yes, yes. You you say yes, yes, like of course that's a one of them. This the whole thing that's sounds ridiculous. No, I'm yeah, just making cool. sure. No, yeah, it's Pharrell. I don't get it either. Um, also, apparently, he also has a musical coming out that's also based on his life. I don't know what Pharrell's doing. I don't get it. I also does don't know Pharrell why. have to ha- have? Does he have like an interesting life? I mean, I mean, I guess if you take all the parts where he stole people's music from him and left them in the dust, like Khalees. I mean, yeah, I guess he does have a pretty interesting life or whatever. I mean, that's the funny thing about the trailer is like you can see there's stuff they're gonna skip over, like all the stuff with Diddy. Like they're just not gonna talk about it. What did so, he do with Diddy? They were collabors for like a, like three like the past the Cavassier, all that shit. They were like Yeah, but what's wrong? Oh, like, you mean like they're just not gonna mention Diddy at all? Yeah, they're not gonna mention why would they mention Diddy? Yeah, they they're not gonna mention it because Diddy was there and they don't want Diddy, they're not gonna mention Diddy in a Lego movie. So That's true. That's true. They yeah, probably did I, before I like the Diddy thing. I think things it's kind of gross. I think it's a grown man making a very sanitized version of his life. Like he's like a superhero or something. Because why is this a Lego movie? Like why? It's weird. Anyway, Lego Horizon looks cool. I'm not sure if I'm going to be jumping on it first, but like the first thing, like, you know, it's not going to be the very first thing I ever play. But um, I think it's cool that we're going to get stuff like this in the future. The fact that it's on Switch is very surprising. I did not know it was on Switch. I didn't catch that. Um, After that, there's uh, Harry Harry Potter. Quidditch Champions. Yeah, I didn't even watch this one. <laughs> it also PlayStation, PS5, Nintendo Switch, Windows, Xbox, Xbox One, Xbox Series X. It's on everything. Uh, it'll be on PlayStation Plus on day one, which is interesting, you know, I guess if you're into Quidditch. Um, I watched the, I did watch the trailer. Uh, oh, I don't know. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, sorry. I, I'm looking at a different list here. I did watch the trailer. Um, I I just kind of want to see more like gameplay because it could be fun to have another sports game that I mean sure people would like it but it just who it, I don't know so far because it didn't really show much to me it looks like it's just gonna be trash. Uh, what game do we skip? I, well, we know it's gonna sell billions. Um, also, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't get why they're only a lot of chapters here, a lot of a lot of trailers at this thing were. CG trailers, which I did not care for. I, like, I'm sorry, I'm here to see gameplay. I don't really care about your con, especially if it's a concept that's like, get, here's these characters. I don't care about the characters. Well, I am. Um, I I imagine many of them were made for the game show. Like the game show reached out, like, yeah, what you insane. know, what do you got? Blah, blah. And so they, which that's is, why you have is, the thing. This is nuts, right? Like I, I get it, but also like, but we'll talk about it later. They pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for these spots, which is insane. Um, but yeah, Quidditch probably gonna sell you know five billion copies. I'm not surprised to make another Harry Potter game because they had one really pop off last year. Um, but like you said, but what game did we play. skip here? No more Room in Hell two. So um, no more Room in Hell was a very popular um, co op zombie game on Steam. Uh, it's finally getting a sequel. It's been years since the game came, like a long time. That game came out like before I was in college. Um, but uh, yeah, no more Room in Hell. It's an eight player co op like survival slash zombie game uh with permadeath um a lot of survival mechanics it's it's kind of like a big left for dead kind of thing i thought it looked fun it's also coming to um wait no it's not coming to anything else this is only pc yeah but i thought that, that was pretty cool it's a big co-op shooter like eight eight player co-op sounds insane to me because i don't know how you keep track of everybody but um the next game after that was uh cuff bust i also didn't write anything about this bus <laughs> cuffers Cuff, cuff bus, uh, uh, no spaces, uh, just cuff bus. <laughs> um, yeah, I, so the C, yeah, go ahead. It, it's made by so there's a YouTuber. I don't know if you call him a YouTuber or a game developer, but he makes his YouTube is about him making his games by himself. Oh. And so he made Choo Choo Charles, the game where Thomas the train engine chases you around uh, a map while you try to solve the mystery of Choo Choo Charles. Uh, from the top of the mountain or whatever, so oh, he made like, that. It's like a parody of you know Slenderman games. No, it's not. It's a full game. I mean, if you watch it, it's a full game. There's there's like full well, sections full and game. it's not really a parody of the Slenderman games because the Slenderman games is go through woods, find note, hurry up, find all notes. You know that it's not that. There's voice okay. acting. There are okay. different sections. You go into different areas. There's, yeah, it's it's not that, but um. He's all, so this is his next game, Cuff Bust. Uh, it's a prison escape game, plays aliens, um, and 
I mean, the trailer looked like a trailer for a game. Uh, like, um... This is gonna be that game that your favorite streamer is gonna play for like two months. Yeah, the, this is, I can tell it's gonna be pretty popular. Um, you know, you pick up soap I'll, I'll be off the ground and throw it at and, the prison guards, yeah. and you you blow like it's a prison escape game. So you escape from prison as aliens. Uh, I think it's kind of cute. Um, yeah, it looks cute. I wish I could show mom. I love mom. I love you being here, but I can't show you stuff because. Did now you, you can't see right the there? computer. That is true. Yeah, so... Um, it, it you can, good. but you I, should mute it. I, I, but I'll just I show you here. It's, I do think it's cool because this is like... You know, we're getting a lot of these co-op games like this recently. Like, you know, um, Lethal Company and uh, that one game where it's kind of like Lethal Company where you're like recording viral things or whatever. This seems like another one of those, right? Like, I, I kind of get it. Um, oh, I just noticed at the end one of them smoking a joint while they're on the beach. It's kind of funny. Um yeah, it's a, uh, it's very tongue in cheekish, very fun looking. Like I said, I look forward to watching uh, a streamer play this for <laughs> two months. It's like it's something that I would play, but I don't know if I'm gonna get all the people around together to play. So, looks cool for what it is. Um, yeah, I, you know, I'm not so, super crazy yeah, about it. Um, next is Sid Meier's Civilization Seven. Um, no, it's not. Let me do the list. I, I have I have the presentation. Do we have to do them like in order? Three. I mean, I have the same Your stuff. List is out of order, bro. Is it, does it have to be the same order? Okay, go okay, ahead. Next game. Sure. Let's go. Go. Come on. Next game is Star Wars Outlaws, um, which was announced, I think, last year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, it was announced last year. It's an open world Star Wars game, the first of its kind uh, from Ubisoft. And we actually got a lot of gameplay. Um a lot of third person shooting, a lot of, um, you know, walking through different, you know, Star Wars locales. We get some different vehicles. Um, we also get some space combat, um, fight combat, stuff like that. It seems like we can pretty much do anything in this game that you want to in the Star Wars universe. Um, but yeah, the game comes out pretty soon. I think it comes out in August, um, if I'm not mistaken. But it looks good. I was actually kind of surprised about this. It looks um, not as serious as, uh, what was it? What's the Star Wars games that been coming out with the redhead dude? Um, um, that, the Reddit man, yeah. Not the red man, Jedi Sur Jedi Survivor, yeah. Like like it's not, it doesn't seem as dark as quite those games seem to be, but looks pretty good. I, I think it's cool that we finally got some gameplay. They said they're gonna show more gameplay on Monday, um, if I'm not mistaken, and throughout the you know the summer games fest shenanigans or whatever. But um, looks good. I think the protagonist looks cool and everything too. I think I think it's. I mean, cool what looks good about it to you? Locales. That's not like different from the. Uh, it's different from the uh, you know the other thing. The, the other. What game? is it? The the other Jedi Jedi game. Oh, I mean, I'm not making direct comparisons. I was just saying that it looks brighter than that one. I mean, I, I don't think that those games can really be compared. I think they're two different games, but. I mean, and also they're in the Star Wars universe. They kind of look similar in that way because it's the same designs and everything. So, um, yeah, just very faithful as far as, like, the recreation of all the different Star Wars locales. Like, you know, they have Tatooine. They have a little bar. You can gamble. I think I think Lando's in there at one point uh, when you're playing cards and stuff. It does seem like they're what they're going for is that you can do anything you want to kind of a thing within that universe because they do show off the gunplay. They do show off some of, like, you know, the traveling and stuff like that, but they also are like, hey, um, you can do other stuff, like, you know, meet other people from the Star Wars universe. Like, I think Job of the Hutt is in it and everything, too. So, yeah, I, I, don't, I mean, you can, I, don't, I don't know how to compare those two games based on what I just saw, but yeah, because that game's not an open world game. That game is a straightforward action adventure game. Okay, well, um, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm all about Star Wars, I guess. I mean, it's cool. It's just I feel like there's so much. Um, but that's fine. You know, we'll see what it's like when it's actually out, right? I mean, you can, we can't tell till it's out, out. So, um, what's next then? Since my list is so bad, what's next? Nobody said your list is bad. I was just confused. It seems like you're skipping over games. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so like go back to your list. Does it have this game in it? Ne Neva, N E V A, Neva. Mm. 
Yes or no? Uh, I don't see it. So there's this thing called Control F. Um, now how did? I don't know if you. What's heard of never, it. dog? Right. So yeah. So that. So we are going to use the video because your list doesn't even have all the games. Um, it's from the same creators of Gre- of Gris and stuff like that. Um, seems to be like a action adventure 2D combat thing. We don't have to spend too much time on this. This is something that was announced. We can we can, we don't have to spend a million hours on everything. I just want to make sure we mention all the stuff. That we're I mean, you, yeah, you needed to game. talk about never. So don't you well, never I'm just worried that you're gonna? Well, your list seems incomplete, so it seems like you might skip over something I care about that's smaller. So that's why I'm like, let's just go by what's on the screen. So yeah, never never looks uh, like another one of those 2D games. It's a lot more combat. I this is know. never these, mom. These games, okay, these games kind of take. It's kind of a leak, take it or leave it type of thing. I don't know. Uh, I feel like it's like it reminds know, me Chris, stuff like that. Like what yeah. was the game where you where you play? You're in the snow. There's the, you're the girl. You're Eskimo peoples. You're just to Eskimo, and you got there's there's a fox, and you go from. It's like this. Yeah, yeah. I forget what the name. Whatever that game was called. About, though. Yeah, it's kind of like that, that except with way more combat. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah. So next up was Civ Seven, uh, Sid Meier Civilization Seven, another cinematic trailer. Um, I don't really know how else you make a trailer for Civilization because if people don't know, it's a strategy game where you make your own civilization. Um, but yeah, pretty pretty trailer. Um, I think it's kind of crazy this game is coming out so soon because I'm pretty sure there's a big because it comes out 2025 and there's a big gap between Civilization Four and Five. So I mean Five and Six. So kind of. Yeah. Like oh wow, there's they're already coming up with seven, which is kind of crazy. But um, I'm excited for that. I like Civ. Civ. The Civ games are fun, but also we're getting to the point where Civilization games where they're so close together now that I feel like at this point you just choose whichever one you like and stay there. Um, especially because to me Civ Five is like timeless. I don't really. I, I, some people said they never played Civ Six, and I'm like I don't. I mean honestly, that's okay because Civ Five has way more than enough stuff in it to keep you occupied. So. Yeah, I just um, wonder, like, what else can you be adding to these games after, like, the, these this many iterations? I mean, you know what I mean? Like, what else could controversial be... Controversial take. Um, this should be a lot of games of service type of thing. Just make one version of it and update it over time. Oh, but you, you, I, nobody likes that word, that phrase. Well, Can't do that. Doing it with shit, well, we're doing it with new IPs and shit nobody cares about. Like, we're doing it with the WB game, which... Oh my god! I need to just real quick pause for multiverses. They ruined that game, dude. The game sucks now. Uh, they slowed it down. It does not play nearly as well as it did before. There's everybody has a fucking infinite combo because the balancing is messed up. They have to take Iron Giant out of the game because his infinite was so bad. Um, and on top of that, they used to let you play characters and unlock them through the game. Now it's like ten times harder to unlock them, and you have to spend like way more money. To, you basically, basically they're they're like begging you to spend money on it now. They they it was already heavily monetized before. Now it's kind of just like disgusting. So, um, kind of disappointed about about multiverses. So I was kind of looking forward to that coming back, and they kind of just you know made it boo boo. Well, um, what's next for on this your... game? As far as the games of service, I think this would be great for games of service because I, I don't. Does the world really change that much in between these entries? That's what I'm trying to get. But anyway. Um, next, like you said. Uh, next up, no, it's not. We have what? Talking to mom. No. Don't move it. You were fine. I hear you moving things. I unmuted. Next up. Next up, we have Black Myth Wukong. Um, yes, that game that you heard about a long time ago. It is finally coming out. Um, it comes out August, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, for people who don't know, it's that game that's an action adventure game with the monkey dude, with the, with the, with the, with the staff. Shavar, if you can describe it better, go ahead and take over. But so, um, imagine Planet of the Apes, eighteen hundred years ago in mystical China, except there's only one ape. Okay, in that time, this guy, he's gonna take down mountains. He's gonna take down lakes. He's going to take down everything around him and devils and stuff because he's Goku of China. And when you're doing it, it's going to be like a Souls game. At least that's what they try to make us feel like it's going to be. That's what it looks like. Uh, yeah. That's what it looks like. So you play as Monkey Man, 
I don't I, I don't know if it really is called Wukong, but I, whatever that guy led you play that guy. You have a staff and you fight giant bosses, you fight all these Chinese mythical things. Think of Neo, but Chinese. And not in the way that Wu Long was, because this is Wu Kong, but kind of in the same way. Uh, I think the style is pretty interesting. It looks really smooth. It looks like a pretty really smooth Elden Ring, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, you know, type of game. So I, I'm excited for it. I do want to see, you know, how people feel about it once it's out, because we've seen some stuff, but we haven't seen like a ton of stuff. Are you gonna order yeah. that? Doll? No. I don't play with dolls, Mom. Mm. I yeah, it, it, it collect looks, action uh, figures. It looks it looks cool. Um, I don't know. It's one of those games where it's like, yeah, come out already. We've been talking about this for three. They, I so wish they had good, shown game. gameplay. I wish I, that's what I wanted to see. I mean, we've seen gameplay, but I wish they had shown more because it's just been it, like two or three years we've been s- sitting on this game here. What's next? All right, we got a VR game. We can skip past it. <laughs> okay. Well, what? Which um, game? I mean, uh, it's called Asgard's Wrath. It's a VR game. Um, okay. Apparently, it was the best VR game. Of, what is it? It says a uh, VR game of the year from last year. Apparently, uh, IGN gave it a ten out of ten. Never heard of it in my entire life. Well, I don't. Um, v, I think, the, I think the, the ad is that it's coming to is that it's coming to Quest now. That's what it was. Um. Next up after that. This game called Once Human, um, which I couldn't really tell what this was. I don't know. It it, it seems to be like a what was it like a third person shooter survival type of game. Um, I think it's co op. I can't tell. It's kind of I, I I can't tell exactly what this game is. Did you see the trailer, Shavar? That's yeah. I'm I'm looking at it now. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is, but. Yeah, it's four player. It looks like Remnant, kind of, in some ways. It kind of looks like a little bit like Remnant. I'm not sure what it is either, though. Uh, I wish they would just, I don't know, just show us, show more, or say, have someone talk or something. Because I'm going to forget what this is the next time I see it. It's going to be a looter shooter of some sort. So I'm sure it'll just fall to the wayside. Um, <laughs> I'm not really too worried about it. Um, Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 was um, announced and it comes out this summer. Um, I am excited about this only because it's the closest thing we're going to get to Gears of War ever again. So um, looks good. It's also four player co-op. I think it was last time too. Um, it comes out September 9th, not, uh, not August. Yeah, it comes out September 9th. Pre-orders already started. They're going to show more gameplay on Monday. Uh, did you play the first um, Space Marine game at all? No, I wanted to. I just never. I mean, it looked cool. It looked real cool. I just never got it to does play look it. Cool. It looks. I mean, then it look cool. Then that game just looks so yeah, cool. Yeah, I like the characters. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, do it, I even it own good. it? I don't even think I bought it. Unless think, it was free or something. I'm, I'm trying to see About if June I have it. 20th? I think I'm like I know I played this at some point. September. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I so don't know. It's coming out. Looks good. Looks good. Um, next. What did up, it say there? When is it out? September ninth. I said that already. Pre-orders. Of Mom just said it too. <laughs> All right. Next up was Metaphor, the um, new game from the guys who created Persona. Uh, we got to see a little more about how the actual gameplay works. Um, I'm going to summarize everything that he said, um, and he took way too long to say it. Um, rather, he was saying it in a way that is within the game's lore. It's got a job system, so it's a it's a it's a RPG with a job system. You'll be able to give the characters different jobs based on, um, I guess it's like emotions they overcome and stuff. Yeah, f- facing fears and anxieties um, is what gives them the different jobs. Um, it seems it to me honestly, it seems like uh, they took Persona and they said now you can turn into the Persona. <laughs> but uh, they showed off a little more of like the actual gameplay. It looks really cool. It sounds like it looks like it's kind of like a sci-fi fantasy type of thing going on. Um, still kind of reminds me of Persona a lot, which I don't think is a bad thing. I think that's kind of what they're going for in that respect. But it does seem like the combat will be a lot more open-ended because now you can kind of form your team around the jobs that you want them to have rather than just whatever character they are, like whatever Persona they come with. 
Um, game looks solid. Um, it is a turn-based RPG. I feel like if that's your thing, you know whether or not you're going to like something like this. comes out October 11th, um, which is perfect for me. So, yeah, look, I, I think this game looks good. I'm, it's basically just the next step up from Persona. I mean, it's called Metaphor, which is hilarious. Like, what, like, what is that? Metaphor for what? What are you talking about? Well, um, it's it's like, I mean, you are this thing, except you don't say it because it, then it would be a simile. But you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, I know you're right. That's exactly yeah. That's what the the that's what the the gimmick is. Um, but I I don't know. I have no other way to until I play it because I'm sure the story is much much different. But this just looks like they wanted to keep doing Persona, but they didn't want to keep it in the high school setting. They just wanted to do something completely different as far as like I the mean, setting. They all look like kids anyway. Yeah, I know. That's it's the anime art style thing, right? Like it's it's like how uh, Xenoblade everybody looks like kids too, right? But they're all apparently like in their thirties or some shit. All right, um, what's next? Yeah. So yeah, metaphor was good. That was cool and all that. Um, next up, we had. Um, Heck is that? Wow, why is my list not working? Yeah. Next up, we had Arkham Shadow, but um, yes, it's a new Arkham game, and it's VR. Um, <laughs> So you finally get a new Arkham Batman game, but it's VR only. Um, it seems to be like a po- it seems like a like a like a pandemic or like post apocalyptic theme kind of thing going on. Um, I'm not sure how this connects to the other Arkham games, especially because in Suicide Squad, spoiler alert, the game starts like this, but they Batman's dead in that universe, so. I'm not but sure. Suicide's Batman's the one narrating too. Suicide so. Squad is not the same universe as the Arkham games. They've said that like a million times. Wait, what? Okay. Then what, then what was the point of the, Why were people so mad that they killed Batman? Okay. Because in the game, Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. They just, for whatever reason, mad you kill Batman as well. I mean, you kill the other Justice League people too, so I don't know why. But they they said yeah like, it's the it's same not... universe. Why do you keep saying? Why do you keep? They literally. The I've D- read it on the like, DC website, bro. It says it's within the same universe. I've 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 read many so many times. I'll look for it. But they've said it's not. It's oh, not the same Batman. It's not an Arkham it's not... game. It's just in the same universe. That's what I'm reading. That doesn't make any sense. They need to. Get it's their because it's not the the, the the story of it. It doesn't make. It's a completely canonically different Batman. And and Superman and everything. Well, I Not guess the, DC's website is just fucking lying to me then. So, okay, whatever. It's fine. They're just trying to get you to buy the game. That's what they want. Okay, uh, anyway, DC what's after that? DC is saying that he dies. Like, DC is saying that this is the same Batman. Okay, I believe whatever you want is what I'm saying, is what I'm hearing. Even though it's clear that it's the same universe. But, okay. I, this game looks like it takes place before Suicide Squad. That's what it looks like to me. Anyway. Um, next up, though, is my favorite news from the night. Um, Street Fighter VI had a surprise trailer. Not 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 because it's a surprise to see Street Fighter VI, but just because um, it was a trailer that we didn't know where it was going. It's an animated trailer um, that announced the next season pass, uh, year two, because year one just finished. Uh, Akuma just released a couple weeks ago. And that was the end of the season pass. And now we're getting year two and we're getting Bison M. Bison. He's back already, even though they told us he was dead. Homelander. <laughs> M. Bison, Terry, uh, Mai and Elena. But the, the actual release order is Bison, Terry, Elena and then Mai. So Mai will be the last one. Um, so, yeah, they, they did a cool animated trailer um, to announce all the characters um, with Bison being like the surprise at the end, and he's the first character coming out. They already have they. I think they did the thing at the end to kind of show us that like he's already made. He's already got a trailer. He actually already has a character overview trailer out already. Um, so you can go watch that too. But um, yeah, big surprise. Um, they announced the entire season pass, which they did not really they did not do before. They they did do it before, but they were kind of being weird about it. But yeah, they revealed the entire season pass. Uh, two guest characters for people who don't know. Um, Terry and Mai are from uh, Fatal Fury slash um, King of Fighters, whichever you want to say it's from. But yeah, I, I thought that this was sick. I I don't want to know what Terry is like with the drive rush, but I guess I'm gonna have to find out anyway. But um, <laughs> it looked it looked really cool. I, I, this is my favorite thing that I saw from the show. Okay, yeah, I thought that was cool and surprising. Um, 
I think it's a good sign for the future of the game and SMK and hopefully we get more and it's not just um just two characters I, I think it's cool and they took pick two of the most popular characters too not some obscure freaking people thought they were going to pick Kyo because I remember Kyo was was uh rumored for Street Fighter 5 but I always thought Terry would be a better choice because people actually know who Terry is <laughs> well people know who Kyo I, is too but Kyo isn't really a Street Fighter like when you think of Street Fighter and SNK stuff Fatal Fury and stuff matches more on to uh, Street Fighter than King of Fighters to me. I mean, I know King of Fighters and Fatal yeah, Fury have I mean, a lot of, but when you think I Fatal like Fury, they're very, and similar. <laughs> they're very similar, but it it is very different. Like when you think Fatal is Fury, this, is this just because Terry's homeless? Is that why you call him? A street well, it's Fighter? the characters, it's the story. It, I mean, Fatal Fury is Street Fighter. It is they're literally in the streets fighting for to to get into a building to go to the top and throw a man off of it i mean king of that's fatal fury the same thing i mean but king of fighters is like let's invite all these martial artists from around the world and this stuff but they don't street they don't fight in the streets i have a, I have a, I mean, I they have do. a hard truth to tell you about street fighter 6's story that's exactly I know. what it is I know, yeah, but I, it's not the same i think fatal fury works better than general s and gay so like so, but, i don't want to see behind, Oh. You don't want to see what? I mean, I'd like to see Kill, but he's not street fighting. I think I you're mean, saying exactly what I said, but just different. He's less popular. He's 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 less popular. No, I don't um, think it's popular. I'm not popularity. I'm talking like the grit. Terry, yeah. you know, he's he's in the sewers. He's dirty. Kill's not dirty. So the background behind this is that um Street Fighter, uh, Capcom and SK, SNK have been collaborating a lot more recently. People are actually thinking that they might have to do SNK 3 soon. Um, but what's really going on is I think that uh, the next game, we're going to talk about it soon, but there's another uh, Fatal Fury game coming out, and that's probably also going to have guest characters from Street Fighter in it. So I'm assuming the guest characters are going to be Ryu and Chun-Li, based on the fact that we got Terry and Mai. So... We'll see. I'm I'm excited to see how that pans out for that game because that game comes out next year. But um, Bison looks really cool. Um, his gameplay trailer is out right now. He has a lot of his same uh, moves. They took some of his moves from the EX series as well. Um, but this Bison looks to be a clone and or the same guy, but he has amnesia. Either way, he has amnesia. He doesn't know who he is. So, um, But Terry and Mai being there is kind of also explained by the trailer. So I don't know if you saw this, Shavar, but when Bison is doing his thing, there's like a bunch of 2D games in the background, including some Fatal Fury stuff. So I think this is like canon now. I think they're kind of to say that like Terry and Mai are here for like story reasons as well, which is just kind of cool. It's kind of like what Tekken did with Akuma. But yeah, I'm looking forward to see all the all the content come out. Okay. Um. Yeah, I, I'm excited. I saw the Bison trailer too. I think he looks cool. Um. I I just hope I really like Bison. I like playing as Bison. I think he's fun to play as. I think he's got some of the best moves in Street Fighter. Um, I just hate charge characters. I, it's just not something. It's just not fun to me. Charge characters it's and funny charge moves. You play Bison. Like you I know because I because I really like the I really like the character. So I play him. I absolutely hate charge characters I, I just I, I hate it i hope they change that i doubt they will but i hope they do change it or maybe i'll just play easy mode or something i don't know i because i like bison i like the the character i like his attitude i like the outfits i like the moves i like the i just don't like the physical gameplay of playing the character because i'll i'll do some knee crushes i'll do some some uh knee presses all day I hate holding the buttons, and it just it doesn't come to me. Well, then like, use modern. Yeah, but then I do less damage. It's not as fun, and people make fun of you and tell you you're a little baby. In a way, we, people stopped doing that a long time ago. Nobody cares if you use modern anymore. People are in tournament using modern all the time. Um, okay. Yeah, so that was cool. That was my favorite thing from the show. Um, next up, there's a quick trailer for a game called Tears of Metal. Um, which is a, what did it say? It said it's a hack and slash co-op roguelike. Um, it seems cool. I, I don't know. Some of these games, I'm like, listen, if I see you in the future, I'll check you out. But for now, I'm probably not going to remember this. Um, this is one of those games. Looks cool though. Looks fun. 
Um, I do think it's funny because I saw a lot of people being like, I'm tired of roguelikes. I don't know why people are tired of roguelikes. There are plenty of other games that aren't roguelikes. Um, anyway, uh, after that, we got the new trailer for Dragon Ball Z Sparking Zero, um, which is <laughs> like every other fighting game trailer for a Dragon Ball game. Um, they show that they have every saga in it. Uh, they got the Frieza saga. They got the Boo saga. They got the new stuff with Jiren in there and everything. That, that was mostly what this trailer was showing off is all the story stuff. But right? we already um, knew that. If you have 138 Gokus, it's got to be through at yeah. least Super. Like, so... Hey, right, listen, look, I, I gotta admit, they've, they've stopped impressing me with the, how we have all the stories thing like 10 years ago. Y'all have been doing this. I, 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 we done, we did, we've done this already. The, re- the only reason it was impressive, and it wasn't 10 years ago, I'm talking like 15 years ago, was because, wow, you can fit all of that on one disc? <laughs> but we're past that, man. We're way past that. We don't need this. You can make, you know, I think the last Dragon Ball game I downloaded was like 120 gigs. It's just so much garbage it's sitting there. So whatever. Like, it's great. You have the whole story. You have the sidelines and whatever. They, they've got the story mode. To me, watching this game, it looks like... Because when you, when you watch the story mode, if it is as intricate as they're trying to make it look and you do go through like um, essentially every arc and like every episode of the arcs it looks to me like that was the plan for the game and then they said okay well let's just take every model of goku that we made for everything every epi- you know every saga let's take every model of vegeta we made for every and let's just make it a fighting game too because it just doesn't make sense that the fighting is so mediocre when we already know, like, we've had this game for 20 years now. I mean, it's no different from Dragon Ball, um, Tenkaichi, Fly in the Air 8 or whatever, you know? So I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I feel like I, either this game changed paths at some point to a fighting game because the story trailer looks pretty... Um, it it looks like they put a lot of effort into the story moments. To me, it's like that dragon, that Goku game, except they're like, let's just do the whole thing this time. And then, oh, yeah, let's make it a fighting game, too. Well, no, I mean, it was always advertised as like the old Tenkaichi games. I mean, I, I know they advertise like, it. I'm talking about in house. Into... Well, yeah, that's what I mean. Okay. No, okay, so what you're saying doesn't make any sense. So they already had Kakarot, which has all this stuff in it. Why would they make another one? If they Kakarot that doesn't one? have all this stuff in it. Kakarot is like... But okay, it, stop real quick. They're adding it over time. If that game has like 5,000 DLCs that, they're, that they've already done that added some of the stuff that was in the trailer. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think that that makes any sense. I think that this is always a fighting game. I think they're trying to bring back the Tenkaichi series. And... Here's the thing. They always advertise these games like that. This is how they advertised Fighter Z was with the story stuff. They never advertised it with the gameplay mechanics. Like, they know their audience. That's why they advertise it like this. I don't think that because the cutscenes look good and stuff and it looks well fleshed out in that respect that this was not intended to be a fighting game, quote unquote. I, I don't agree with that. I feel like the game was, I feel like the game is what it is. I don't think, I don't think they pivoted to making it a fighting game, especially because, like, yeah, I mean, like, the game was already a fighting game, so I don't know how you pivot Tenkaichi to be more Tenkaichi. Like, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I, I feel Force, like... Delta Force, Hawk Ops, Black Hawk Down. I'm sorry, what were you going to say? Go ahead. What were you going to say? Nothing. All right, so um, next game is a military shooter, Delta Force Black Hawk Down. Um, not really much to say about this one. It just looks like you're um, committing war crimes in Iraq or something. It just looks about like that. I don't really see, you know, not, not too much different from, you know, like a Call of Duty or something. Um, after that, though, we return back to fighting games, thank God. Um, and we get a short trailer for City uh, Fatal Fury, City of the Wolves, which is a sequel to Garo, Mark of the Wolves um, from back in the day. Um, They start with all the nostalgia, all the, you know, game cabinets or whatever. And then they just show off. I think they only shot off one new character in this. Um, It's no, they show two guys name. Who? Who's the second one? Dijanae. 
Oh, BJNA was in other trailers. She's not new. I don't think I saw her in the other trailers. Was she? Yes. Then why'd she get a trailer? She didn't get it. They did. Like they put out a whole trailer for her. Yeah. Oh, I'm pretty yeah, but, st- we I don't think... knew she, but we already knew she was. But we already knew she was in the game. Like she was in all the other trailers already. They, this is just a character trailer. But we already knew she was there. The only new character, there's the character that we have not seen before, is the one I'm talking about. Um, okay, if you say so. Name? Vox. Yeah, um, Vox. Yeah, Vox is the new one. Everybody else in the trailer we've seen before. Um, Are you sure? Because but... even. Even her, like they put her name and everything. They didn't do that for. I mean, if they showed everyone before, then why would they single her out and then the new guy? I mean, you might be right. I just didn't. It didn't make sense to me. I mean, I don't know. I I remember seeing her in the old trailers, especially because like she's a staple character. I kind of thought because she was already there. Maybe I'm wrong. I just remember seeing her in the old trailers already and she was in the like i don't know she she's there though um looks better than i think that what's impressed me with this game is that they kind of it looks a lot better than kof 15 um the art style looks a lot better they kind of made the faces look better too somebody did a side-by-side comparison of a lot of the character models of the characters that are also in kof 15 and it looks a lot better looks really good um so yeah that 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 was just a trailer we still have a release date we just know it's coming out 2025 what else? What's after that? Uh, Mecha Break, which has it's a it seems to be a multiplayer mech fighting game, um, with some designs from like some OG Gundam uh, staff or like designers. So all of the designs look like Gundams, but they're not Gundams, you know. But um, this gets a beta later this year, I think. Um, a closed beta this summer, if I'm not mistaken. But, yeah, uh, yeah it looks cool. Mecha games are usually, I'd say, like, if you play 10 mecha games, you'll probably like one. I don't know. I played a lot of mecha games, and a lot of them are just, like, they show you things, they're like, I can do that. And then you're like, I can't really do that. Or even if I can't, it doesn't look as cool as it did when they showed me I could do it. And then, like, the killing each other is real hard. It should be more, I don't know. I I, want to play Armored Core, the new one, because I heard that one's pretty good. But a lot of these mech games, I played a lot of mech games. And they just weren't fun. So, I don't know. Maybe this one will be okay. But it kind of looks like more of the same mech to me. Looks like more of the same. And also, I don't like that it's probably going to be multiplayer based. I'm, I don't know. I'm tired. Yeah, of almost all of them are. Everything yeah. being multiplayer. It's kind of annoying. Um, Yeah. After that, there was a Blumhouse, like, like Sizzle, like Sizzle Reel. They Is it like Blum or Bloom? Five different games. Bl- I think it's Blum. Because it's the movie guy. Mom, do you know Blumhouse? Do you know how that's pronounced? I've always yeah. said Blumhouse, but that doesn't mean yeah. anything. Blumhouse, tomato, tomato. Um, yeah, they also make a lot of games. They have they have been in the games you know, sector for a little bit. They announced several different things. Um, we didn't really get a big look at any of them. We kind of just got a few different you know, passes around. But they all seem to be horror games. Um, there's... Crisol Theater of the Dolls was like a first person like shooter horror game it looks like there's um this farming simulator looking game that seem it seems like a yeah Grave Seasons seems like a take on like you know Story of Seasons and Stardew Valley and stuff except with like a horror take on it right um Sleep Awake which is a horror game from Eyes Out and the developer a developer we don't know what that is yet either <laughs> um is that the like this 2D poly. pixel one no, I no, I said that one already. That was uh, Grave Seasons. Grave of yeah, great yeah. That was the two D one. Um, after Sleep Awake was Fear of the Spotlight. It seemed it's like one of those. It's these are picking up a lot recently. It's a low poly, like you know, tries to look like an old game, kind of like horror game. There was one that came out recently, uh, Crow Country, that was really popular. It seems to be something like that. Um, very similar to that actually. The simulation also seems to be like a take on a lot of different horror games. Um, it's a horror game within a horror game is what it looks like, which looks kind of cool. That one look, was the most intriguing to me because it looked like it was like a take on like, you know, Resident Evil, Alone in the Dark, all that stuff. Um, Project C. Can't really tell what that is. And then they have another sizzle reel that just shows all the games again. <laughs> you can't tell what that is. <laughs> no. Well, and that's part, well, that's part of the thing, right? Like. 
they have all these things going on. Like the simulation looked really cool, right? Like after the simulation, though, I can't tell what the hell's going on. And from the okay. visual minds of Sam Barlow, Brandon Brandon Cronenberg is Project C. The future was meant to be broken, and then we see nothing. Like it's just a bunch of it's 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 all the other games after that. So they don't even actually show us what that game is. They just say we got a game from the Cronenberg guy, and then they end the trailer. Um, looks cool. It looks cool though. It seems like they got a lot of cool stuff coming. Okay. After that, uh, is that Alan Wake or? Uh, after that was, um, let me get my Vias back up. Oh my God, my more than Power Rangers. Read, read rewind. Hold on, um, Mom. So before we, oh, I'm sorry, my mic's gone. Before we move on to that, I found the pronunciation. It rhymes with Plum. Okay. Blumhouse. Okay. Blumhouse. What a horrible name. Perfect. It's somebody's name, Shavar. No, I mean in a good way because he does horror. <laughs> Okay. Um, oh, next up that. was Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Rita's Rewind. Um, we're 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 finally getting more retro uh, beat 'em up games. Thank God. Uh, in my opinion, there aren't enough of them. We had a little we had a little spurt there with uh, Streets of Rage and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, but now this one's coming out. I was surprised to see it wasn't the same studio that made the Ninja Turtles game. It's like Hasbro Retro or something like that, Retro Arcade. Yeah, I think um, they're trying to do their own thing. When I saw this, I, th- I'm excited because I like Power Rangers, the classics. I like beat 'em ups. I remember playing this game as a kid. Well, not this game, but you know the old beat 'em up as a kid, and it was one of my absolute favorite ones. Uh, I don't like the art here. The art looks kind of really sloppy. I do like the pixel art. I don't like the oh, okay. the okay. cutscene art. It just looks like Here's the thing. You got people doing pixel art. You could have paid like it looks like they paid some you could have paid someone to do some really good stuff. I don't know. Some of it looks really um webtoonish, like uh, yeah, webcomicish yeah. in a way yeah. and I, I I'm not a fan of that. The the actual fighting the gameplay parts look fun. I like the um the vehicle sections. I like the I, I don't know. It, it looks good. I'm going to get this game. Out of all the stuff yeah. we've seen, you know, the fighting game stuff is given, but that's that's one that I'm like, yeah, I got to get that. That looks fun. Yeah, I, I agree. That's like, yeah, this and like Metaphor and the fighting games, these are the games I'm actually going to buy. Star Wars Outlaws is still, you know, yet to be seen, but this game, I'm getting that off rip. It looks good. It looks like they're kind of taking notes from a lot of the stuff that the, the, the you know, the new, uh, no, what is it? Sorry. The new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game did well. Um, seems like they're taking a lot of notes from that. I agree on the animation though. I almost feel like they should have just done the, the pixel animation for the cutscenes as well. Kind of. Yeah. Like if Ninja I Ninja mean Turtles either did. that or like actually do some really good animation, because not like you know you know who's buying this game is a thing. Like my people my age and maybe a little younger are gonna be really excited for that. Because Power Rangers is canceled right now. There's not even like a show out for kids at the moment. So Damn, like, I didn't know that. yeah, they it got it got canceled last year, and so like, there's no, they're not making toys anymore. They're not making a show anymore. There's no movie in the works anymore. So if you're gonna put this out with the classic Rangers and all that stuff, you know who that's pointed toward. That's pointed toward like '90s kids. Who can buy stuff now? Uh, is it only on Steam? No, um, I don't think so. It just showed a Steam logo on the trailer. Maybe it's just. A... But um, yeah, yeah it's just listed on Steam. That's all. I think it's coming to everything though. All right. After that, what was next? Alan Wake. No, not not quite yet. There's a couple. There's a quite a few things before Alan Wake. There's a lot of stuff before Alan Wake. Um. So next, I'm just going to, let's, let's just skip, hop, skip, and jump through some of these, right? Um, Kingdom Come Deliverance is getting a sequel. Um, King, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 coming out mm-hmm. later. Um, for people who don't know, it was like well-liked for a lot of its realism. It's kind of like Skyrim, but like a lot more grounded. Um, there was a game called Dear Boy announced. I'm sorry. I'm kind of over these like soft-looking like story games or whatever. That's It's one of those. Like, play it. Man, we should have done this whole skip it. over stuff early. Okay, we did two games in like 10 seconds. All right, what's next? What's after right. that? Slip, Slitterhead um, coming from the Silent Hill. Um, the guy who made Silent Hill, he's got another game. 
That one looked got interesting. Some gameplay of it. It looked interesting. The the combat itself looked kind of jank to me. It looked real stiff. I I like um, the name. Yeah. I like the atmosphere. I, I don't, yeah, it, it's cool. It seems like you're switching bodies a lot. Like you take control of people and use them to fight. It's kind of the mm. vibe that I'm getting from the trailer. What do you think, Mom? Um, How are you liking Slitterhead up there? Uh, I like the way it looks. Ew. That was a body. Ew. The part that confused me is when he you go into somebody's body and then the monster eats you. I'm like, what was supposed to happen there? What's going on? Like, so I, is I that was, a that was discarded where I was kind of body? It's something, but like you, you can jump bodies. Like you just saw the guy jumped off the roof. Right, he's right. dead on the street, but he switched bodies before he hit the end. And something yeah. came out of that body. Yeah, Monster. Well, I, yeah, and I, I don't know what's going on. I think the game looks pretty interesting. Um, I think it looks cool. I'm excited to see what it is more so like closer to release date because it seems like you use the bodies to fight and everything, but then it also seems like you kind of use some of them as just like fodder because sometimes he just jumps into some. Yeah, some of the bodies have like powers and then other ones are just like dudes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see that. that. That's what's confusing me. I, I'm excited to see it just because it does look something unique. I think this looks really cool. Like it doesn't look boring either. Like it's got a lot of action in it. I'm just curious how all this is going to pair together. Because I do like that they're switching between people and stuff like that. Like, that part's really cool. Um, the part where he gets his arm cut off and it gets back, like, he just, you know, sticks it Throws back it to back. himself is really cool, too. The um, monsters looks good. good. I, they announced this a while ago and we didn't get any gameplay, so it's cool to finally get some gameplay. Um, next up after that one, we have um, the Killer Beam game. Uh, this is... It's meme time, everybody. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll go pretty quickly to this one, too, because it's not too much to talk about. Killer Bean was this online series uh, that an animator who worked on uh, Matrix Reloaded, and I think they also worked a little bit on John Wick. Um, they made this little animated series. It's an action series. It's really goofy looking, but now it's finally got a video game, which is what something people have been asking for for a while. <laughs> um, and it's going to be an Killer Bean. Access, so, oh, yeah, he Killer looks Bean. cool. Yeah, no, it's cool. I think this is going to be sick um, because the Killer Bean videos are really stupid. But one thing that is cool about them is the action is really solid. And it's because, like I said, one of the main guys on it animated for Matrix Reloaded. Um, so, you know, they it's <laughs> okay. it's it's good pedigree. It's, it's, it's good pedigree we got going, right? It'll be like, you know, John Woo type stuff, too. Like, you know, but comes in the early access this summer so we're ever gonna get a home star yeah. runner game when's that coming out Ooh, he's had like five he's had like five he's had like five games cool well games. i mean not on the home star website or i yeah, want a playstation he's had like five, he's, he's oh, had like five games that sure. was okay. a cool kill. Um, so um yeah it's, it's like a first person shooter it's Matrix. Like a third person shooter it's a brawler. It's got some variety of gameplay. As, as you can see, mom's enjoying it. It's, She's really I liking this game. But this is what we got to get for her. They are cool. <laughs> looks sick. All right. What's um, after Killer Bean? After Killer Bean, we got a game called Wander Stop, which is this is where I stopped giving a shit. Um, Wander Stop. Oh, wait. No, I skipped the game. Yeah, Karen. I did not care about that. It's a climbing game. Um didn't really care about oh it it's first. karen not karen karen i thought it said karen i'm like what's karen, yeah, really karen. um yeah next up after that was a game called wander stop from annapurna um you watch the trailer and it looks like it's just like a, oh it's like a you know stardew valley type of you know simulation thing oh you take care of plants blah 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 but at the end of the trailer it seems like something else is going on right so obviously they're not showing us all the gameplay just showing us a piece of it but it does mom really might like this like she gets a like garden a simulation <laughs> yes game. yeah i think she'd like it um but it seems to be like a simulation game but like at the end there's a twist right so we'll see if there's more to it as the game gets more gameplay but I thought it was cool because it did have like a spin on that part at the end. Um, after that was Unknown Nine. Um, this game is unknown to me because I do not care. Um, it's story driven, third person uh, action game um, where you switch bodies and use like a spiritual state or whatever. I'm sorry. I kind of don't like these trailers where it's just a bunch of cutscenes with dialogue from people that I don't know or care about yet in this video game. Yeah, I, I think at this point, like, 
I was okay with that 20 years, even 10 years ago. I was kind of okay with that because you want to get over things in the game that maybe you can't get without playing. So you use cutscenes and you use things. But like today, we have so much fidelity with the graphics. We have so much like effort put into story. Into, like, okay, great. Show me the gameplay though. You know, like you don't have to just give me these cut together things where I don't know what's happening and everything's in slow-mo. I don't know what it's really like. I don't know what the game is. You know, they're selling me a movie, yeah. not a game. That's what right. I'm saying. I feel like this is a, this is what some people would call a Sony game if it wasn't, you know, not a Sony game. In Killzone 2? Or 3? Yeah. Which yeah. one was it? Well, not in that respect. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, like Last of Us or God of War. That's what I'm talking about. Um, so... Well, that's the thing, Shavar. This isn't just cutscenes. This is gameplay. It's just I know it is, but it's dialogue super and slow bullshit. and like, cinematic. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Like we got you all got to stop doing this with these story games. Like like trying to show us the story in the. Tra- I'm sorry. If somebody's gonna care about it, they're gonna buy it. You got to stop doing all this exposition in the trailer because I get it. It's a cool protagonist. It's nice. It's nice. Nice having a protagonist isn't a white guy. I get it. Um, this trailer was boring. I, I, I think care. I think um, it's that the people that are making it care so much about it that they don't realize people don't care about it, and that makes yeah. you. It's like you know sometimes you just gotta cut that. Like uh, I watched the uh, that uh, movie about the Von Erichs. What's it called? Iron Claw. Um, yeah, and it's a good movie. It was better than I thought, but they cut a lot of stuff out of it. But it's probably better to cut it out because it's just not yeah. going to help the story you know it's just extra horribleness all right what's after that yeah the von eric just a quick thing about the von eric movie literally the only people i saw complain about that movie were people who are way into wrestling like everybody else i saw who watched it was like yeah this is great so, i like i liked like, it did you watch it yet mom you... no well that's the end of that conversation well, that's that. um <laughs> yeah <laughs> So next up was um, it was a few it was a few different little trailer things or whatever the fuck it wasn't too much going on. Um, we get to Alan Knight. I mean, I want to talk about Alan Wake and Phantom Blade and and uh, uh, the Sonic game. And okay, I think that was it. Skip, let's skip ahead then. Let's skip. Let's skip ahead then. So Sonic, okay, because we'll there's too much going on. Stuff. We're at like hour there three of this us, podcast. There was an Among Us. There's Among Us. No, we're not. We're actually an hour two. Um, there was an Among Us TV show announced. That was a thing. Um, yeah, we've officially reached singularity on that. Among uh, the Us. First Descendants was shown. Uh, don't care. It's a, that's another looter shooter, and it tried to make us care about the story again. Um, if it's a looter shooter, stop trying to show me story stuff. That's all I, that's all I got to say about that. Um, unless you're Destiny or some shit like that. Sonic X Shadow Generations. We got a new trailer for that. Um, so... I'm finally clear on what this game is. I wasn't exactly clear on what it is. So it's a new shadow game, but they also packaged it with the original Sonic Generations game, but they remastered that and added a couple new things. So this is a new shadow game. Which Yeah, I think that's cool. Is, yeah, that's cool. I, it's confu- It's like slightly confusing because it's like I don't get why they shoved the Sonic game into it. But my only thing about that is it's probably because the, the shadow part probably isn't long enough. So yeah, that that's exactly cool what this. it is. Yeah, I, I'm cool with this um, because one, I was actually I actually cracked open Sonic Generations the other day on PC and it's fine, but like it doesn't look that great. So it's cool that we're getting like upgraded graphics, all that stuff like that. So that looks cool. It's coming out um, pretty soon. I think I have the release date in here, October 25th. Yeah, it comes out in October, so it'll be out soon. A lot of, a lot of good games coming out in October. Uh, let's see. Let's skippity bop until we get to Alan Wake. In between Alan Wake, there was a Dune Awakening uh, game. I don't really care. Uh, Battle Aces. There was a simple RTS. They got a whole little section of for themselves. I skipped past it. Um, the finals had a new season and a ranked mode that was announced uh, that will come out next week. And then we get to Alan Wake too. So Alan Wake two had a couple of cre- had a couple of great updates. For some reason, they had Max Payne walk on stage. I, th- I didn't know that they like. The guy was a real guy, but uh, here he is. He's on stage. You didn't know Max Payne was an actual guy? No, I know. This I'm is Max Payne? I'm, no, I'm this is... A joke. I'm making a joke. I'm making a joke. I'm making a joke. 
Um, this is Alan Wake, the trailer. So, mom, for for, for mom, mom, this is the guy. He made Alan Wake. I'm sorry, he made um, Alan Wake and Max Payne. He's just the facial model for Max Payne. So this is quite literally Max Payne. That's what. That's the face. That that's guy face that was I just saw. No, 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 oh, no. Okay. This is the gotcha. trailer for the Alan Wake expansion. So I love so, it. Yeah, I love so Alan, Alan Wake two. Alan Wake two came out last year to raving reviews. Um, I liked it quite a bit as well. I need to replay it, but um, Alan Wake 2 came out. It's great. Now, though, um, a, th- a big thing people had a problem with was that there was no physical edition. Now there's a physical edition. Um, pre-orders already started. Um, there's going to be a physical copy that comes with the DLC. There's also going to be a collector's edition as well. So for people who want a physical copy, that's finally coming. More importantly, uh, new <laughs> DLC came out for the game and, and DLC expansion pass that started today, um, connecting all of the Alan Wake universe stuff um he said that it's kind of like what if scenarios um i don't believe him because a lot of the stuff that he said is what if scenarios before like in person um but yeah it connects um alan wake to quantum break because one of the main characters the guy yeah the guy in the trailer who's prominent is from quantum break which for people who don't know that was an xbox exclusive game that is within the same universe as alan wake and um also um jesse faden from control um is also going to be one of the playable characters, which is sick. I'm very excited about that. Out of all of the games, as much as I love Alan Wake, I think Control is my favorite out of all the games that have been released so far. So I'm excited to play as Jesse. The character models look insane. Um, they look really, really good. Um, yeah, the girl, who, the girl, who, the girl who plays Jesse Faden um, is a real person, and they basically, they basically just put her in the game. It's kind of weird. Um, same with Sam Wake. Uh, so Remedy Entertainment is like in their own game now um, for people if people who didn't quite get what was happening in the trailer. It's getting really meta now. So it's kind of like they're interacting with the characters themselves. They go by the name like Poison Productions instead of Remedy Entertainment, which is like, you know, a spin on Remedy Entertainment. But yeah, um, <laughs> it started already. So if you like Alan Wake, if you liked Alan Wake 2 and you finish it and you want more, um, DLC is already out. So yeah, he said it's going to be several episodes. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I know that there's another DLC set after this, but Night Springs is the one that came out, and it's playable now. So if you played Quantum Break, if you played, you know, um, Control, and you were wanting to see how all those things connected, it's finally happening. So I'm, I'm excited about this. I um, Also, yeah, Rose from the Diner also is one of the playable characters, which is really cool. Yeah, so, Rose. Okay. Yeah, so... um. Yeah, that was another really good exam- another really good announcement. Um, it was also really cool seeing that Jesse has her powers from the Control series and all that stuff like that too. So it'll be cool to kind of see that in the Alan Wake engine. Okay. But uh, um, next yeah. is uh, F- Phantom Blade, right? That's got to be. We went through like thirty games. <laughs> Phantom Blade. What's that? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, Power World update. Who cares? Monster Hunter Wilds was before. Um, do you want to talk about that at all? What, what it's coming dog i mean what okay monster I mean, in the wild they made, pretty, they made some pretty big announcements it's gonna be cross play right. on all platforms this, from day one that's cool that's cool that that's that's actually pretty neat a lot of people to hunt with um yeah. what else they say um also he was he was just kind of excited about the monsters it seemed like the creator was but no it's coming to all consoles on the same day this time before people who don't know um, these games were kind of released on different consoles at different times. I think Monster Hunter World was only on PlayStation for a while. Now it's on PC. Rise was only on uh, Switch. Now it's on PlayStation and PC and Xbox. So finally we're getting one that's released on all of them at the same time. Now, let's get to what Shavar wants to talk about. Phantom Blade. Um, Sekiro 2, as I like to call it. Um, it, 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 sure is, it sure is a game that exists now. Um, it's getting a is it a beta or a demo? Did they say? I don't remember. Um, no, they're gonna show uh, us more I, gameplay. Yeah, yeah I, I don't remember. I, I don't. No, I mean, we got more Phantom Blade Zero gameplay. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, uh, the game looks fun. I'm excited. I just want to play it. It looks it looks super fun. I need to finish Sekiro. Um. Yeah, I just haven't had time. I need to get back in there and finish it. I was doing pretty. I was clipping pretty good. I think the only boss I died more than once at. What? Well, uh, there was the. What are the little. 
What are you talking about again? What game are you talking about? Sekiro. Oh, okay. I died a couple times at the lightning guy, the first lightning guy fight. And then I died maybe once against one of the, the purple guys who flies around. You got to hit him and then capture him. And he's like in the bottom of a cave. But I'll yeah, tell you that. Yeah. I've been doing pretty, I was doing pretty well in that game. It's going at a nice. The, the boss fight I had the, the biggest problem with was the last one and the wolf. I think his name is. It's like your your master or whatever. That oh, okay. boss fight fucking sucked. Oh man, that boss fight sucked. It was good, but it was hard. It was really hard. Um, if this game is anything like, if this game is half as good as Sekiro, it'll be good. Because Sekiro is that, that's a great game. Um, but yeah, that's that's where Summer Games Fest ended. Um, uh yeah so a lot so for 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 people who don't know um a lot of these spots cost at least like a hundred thousand dollars it's kind of crazy um it, it it's kind of insane i think one minute trailers are two hundred fifty thousand dollars so a lot of money floating around in this room for honestly some games i don't really care about um, <laughs> there was a lot of good stuff though i think we got a lot of good stuff out of this nothing too insane right like we got the alan wake dlc which people weren't expecting to come out the next day we got um, a Pal World update. We got uh, Sonic X Generations, um, the Killer Bean game, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Civ Seven, and most importantly for me, the Street Fighter Season Two pass. I thought that was like that was the highlight for me personally, um, mostly because I didn't expect anybody, any of the people they put in it to be in there besides maybe Bison. But I thought the Bison was mega dead. I thought Tomorrow, Bison way, would come was, back was, in like four years. Um, as like uh you know they're like oh he's not dead but like they did it season two which is well that's what i was gonna tell you is in this last uh world tour update they already hinted he was coming like they they said that they spotted him already and from what i remember reading this is a clone so i don't think that this is like his original body from what that wouldn't make sense either because it wasn't that the whole point he's trying to clone himself and so many i mean that's yeah. cammy that's all those clones. I think it's funny it's... he didn't choose a different body though. Like it's just yeah. I, I don't know. I'm 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 on the side that it's actually not a clone. He just forgot and he thinks he's a clone because it does. It wouldn't make sense. He makes all these clones that aren't good enough, and then right before he dies, he gets the the one or there is one. Yeah, you know, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. But hey, we'll yeah. see. Okay. Yeah, but that was Summer Games Fest. Um. Uh. I don't know. I, I did think it was kind of rude that before it happened, Jeff Keighley literally came out and said, don't expect too much this year. I think that was kind of like messed up <laughs> considering they had a whole lineup already ready. And he literally said, don't expect too much. Yeah, I don't like Jeff. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for going running through those because I watched it this morning. I got I got to tell you, half the time I was asleep. All right. I, 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 I only, know what you mean. I, I only barely remember those things. OK. But I remember Cool Beans. I like that one. Cool Beans. Killer Beans. Killer Beans. Killer Beans. Killer beans. All right. Well, um, look, that's two hours of a show here. I did have a. Uh, a game quiz here for you, but I I think I'm just gonna wait until oh, man. Uh, next time. <laughs> time for this yes. Stuff, dude. Okay. Sure. Why not? I mean, I got I got time. I'm just thinking, like, you know, I like uh, we we did. I mean, that was a lot of news. That's a lot of news. Okay. A lot of news, and, and then, that way uh, I can get okay. my brain we adjusted also, we also for this never quiz. Never finished talking about Fallout either, so that's cool. We didn't. Yeah, we didn't get to talk about Fallout, so we got a lot of stuff to talk about. We're going to have to, you know, balance where we are and on what we're doing, you know, if, you know, so mom, you don't always need a movie review. Biko, if you, if you miss a week on a game or you need two weeks for a game, you know, you know, we got, we got so many, uh, buckets in this chicken uh, the other way around and, uh, eat it all at once. But, uh, well, maybe we'll do the quiz next time. Uh, depend. Well, we'll probably have less news, so we could probably do all three next time, and Fallout, and uh, whatever else we want to do. Yeah, that sounds good. We'll that's eventually exciting. get around to Fallout. The show's, show's kind of old now, but yeah, we'll get around. Show to is old now. We got to find something else. Just tell me what you think about it at the end. You know? Acolyte is out, but I, I don't have Disney anymore. Oh yeah, well, see, we should review that show since we talked about it and how. So. I mean, clearly, 
I've heard it's good we're, so far. I haven't we're not sexist yet. or racist, right? I mean, Barely. Well, I not in any way that matters. And sexist, and he's ableist too. You know, he's little... I'm not ableist. Because <laughs> oh, of the Abbott jokes. Oh God! Just keep moving. Anyway, um, thanks for listening to the show. I'm not ableist. I don't think I am. And I think that's what matters the most, exactly. actually. You're either you're either Kane or ableist, so make up your mind. Which one died? <laughs> Able. <laughs> uh, well, we see why. Okay. <laughs> Kane is well built, had everything going right for him. Just yeah, you know, a little jealous. And Abel. Thanks for listening to the show. This has been the Super Show Brothers Podcast, episode 139. Next episode is 140. Um, I hope you can count. Can I did it for you. Uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks for listening to the show. Have a good weekend. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Make a lot of